Hello and welcome. In this video, I will provide a demonstration of using the Google Cloud Shell. The Google Cloud Shell provides a full-blown Linux terminal from within your browser. The intended audience for this video are those who are new to or unfamiliar with the Google Cloud Shell and would like to learn how to use it. To access the Google Cloud Shell, simply go to the URL console.cloud.google.com. You can see it there. So simply press enter and you'll be prompted to log in with a Gmail account. All you need is a normal Gmail account. A brief caveat, if you have a Google for Workspace or a Google for Education Gmail account, your administrator may not have enabled the Google Cloud Platform. To be safe, either contact your administrator to confirm you've accessed the Google Cloud Platform or simply use a normal Gmail account. So I'm now going to log in with a Gmail account And as soon as we log in, we're presented with what is called the Google Cloud Platform. If this is the first time you've logged in, you may have to accept the default terms and conditions that Google presents you with. Be aware that the Google Cloud Shell is a free resource. No credit card is required. You're required to spend no money. It's completely free. To access the Google Cloud Shell, simply choose the icon on the upper right-hand side that looks like a greater than arrow followed by an underscore. As you can see, my tooltip over the icon displays activate cloud shell. So I'm going to click on that now. And you'll notice that the bottom one quarter of the screen is now displaying some information. I'm going to drag it up here by selecting the little blue mark. I'm going to drag it all the way up, or at least halfway. And now it's provisioning my Google Cloud Shell machine. If this is the first time you've done this, it may take two or three minutes to provision your machine for the very first time. As you can see, mine is taking some time. I'm going to let it do what it does. If you haven't used it in a while, it may take about a minute or so. Oh, there it is. It's done now. So as you can see, that took about 30 seconds from me. If I were using this every day, it would typically take only about five seconds. I'm now going to drag this up to take full advantage of my screen. Another potential problem to highlight is that when you attempt to activate it, as I did a few moments ago, it may take five, six, seven minutes and just apparently seems to hang and not make any progress. In my case, when that happened to me, I found it was due to certain add-ons that I was using with my browser that were incompatible with the Google Cloud Shell. So if that problem happens to you, if it hangs for five, six, seven minutes and there's no progress, then if I were you, investigate your add-ons, maybe temporarily disable them, and then attempt once again to activate the Google Cloud Shell. The very first thing I recommend you do is to configure your terminal. So up on the upper right-hand side, you see the gear icon with the tooltip terminal settings. Click on that and then choose terminal settings and then set the settings according to your choice. So I have dark theme by default, the text size I have largest, mainly because I'm making this demonstration to you. Normally I would probably go with medium or large. Um, font courier new, copy settings, I would enable these. Copy on select and be aware that copy and paste is not control C, control V, it's control shift C, control shift V. So be aware of that. Um, and likewise, um, keyboard is fine. And I would also enable show scroll bar so you can easily scroll back. In my view, the Google Cloud Shell is fantastic. You have access to a Linux terminal running a Debian-based Linux inside a virtual machine on Google Cloud's infrastructure. Another fantastic feature of the Google Cloud Shell is that it comes pre-cooked with so many software development libraries and utilities. And by that, I mean they come pre-installed. For example, if you want to run Python, by default, be aware that the default version is 2.7.16. Basically, one should never use Python 2 now unless one has a good and compelling reason to do so. The only reason the default version of Python is version 2 is for legacy reasons, to support legacy scripts and so on. Nowadays, it is expected that people would run Python version 3. And as you can see, Python version 3 is also installed. But not only that, if you wish to program in Java, as you can see, the Java software development kit and compiler is installed. If you want to write some programs in the C programming language, sorry, typo there, you can see the GCC compiler is installed. Needless to say, 
Google's own language called Golang is installed. Also, for those who are lovers of Ruby, one can develop programs in Ruby using the Google Cloud Shell. And of course, JavaScript is supported via Node. Very good. As you're well aware, all software developers need a good distributed version control system. And needless to say, Git is installed and fully available, ready to go. Of course, most of your favorite editors are installed. My favorite editor is Vim. So Vim, of course, comes pre-installed. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Vim but want to learn Vim, even the Vim Tutor is installed. The Vim Tutor is a wonderful application to teach yourself and get up to speed with Vim from scratch. Fantastic. And last but not least, containers are supported via the Docker. So if you type the command Docker, as you can see, Docker is installed. So one can run Docker containers directly from within the Google Cloud Shell Linux terminal. I think that's fantastic. So I'm going to clear the screen there now. I now wish to highlight a very important aspect of the Google Cloud Shell, and that is that you only have five gigabytes of persistent storage space. So if I type the command df minus h, df standing for disk free and minus h means display the output in human readable format, you will see that these are the partitions that I have mounted by default. Very good. The most important partition to note here is the home partition. This is the only partition that will maintain persistent storage. That is to say, your data will be saved and exist after you exit the session, such that if you were to log into the Google Cloud Shell tomorrow, the only documents or data that will be saved is that which you've saved into the home folder. So for example, if I run a command sudo um, apt-get install um, say the tree command, it's a useful command. So it warns me, you are now running app get inside of Cloud Shell. Note that your Cloud Shell machine is ephoral and no system-wide changes will persist beyond the session end. This is really, really important. So be aware that although I've installed this utility tree, okay, if I run it there now, it just displays an output there of all the contents of my fol folders and files and subfolders in a tree format. This utility will not exist if I were to log back out right now and log back in again. It will be gone. So be aware of that. That's an important point. Okay, I'm going to clear my screen. Now, another important point is if you want to look up help, I mean, you might be tempted simply to type the command help, and that just gives a generic message. And it highlights that if you want to find out help regarding Google's cloud software development kit, you type the command G cloud help. But for those of you who are using the Google Cloud Shell simply to access a Linux terminal and possibly learn Linux, then the command you most likely are looking for is built in space help. And then this will display help associated with the bash interpreter. So I'll demonstrate that now. So built in space help. And now you can see a list of all the the available bash commands within the Google Cloud Shell. So for example, to display help on the echo command, one would simply type built-in space help space echo. And as you can see, it displays help there on the echo command. Of course, the man command is available, which the man is a Linux command which is short for manual. So I could type man space ls, and that will show the manual page for the ls command. Excellent. I now wish to walk through and demonstrate the various menu options available with the Google Cloud Shell. So the first menu option I wish to highlight is the session information option. So if I click on the session information icon, the only option available is usage quota. So as you can see, the Google Cloud Shell has weekly usage limits. And if you reach these limits, you will need to wait before you can use a Google Cloud Shell again. So what are the limits? You are allowed to use a Google Cloud Shell for 50 hours each week. That is more than seven hours a day for seven days a week, which is very, very generous. And as you can see, it displays the next time my quota will reset. 
This is to stop people abusing the feature Google Cloud Shell. On that note, please don't abuse this. Google are constantly monitoring the Google Cloud Shell usage. And if someone were to say, for example, do Bitcoin mining, for example, they would be very quickly detected and Google will ban their accounts. So please use it for educational or good uses permitted by Google's terms and conditions. Okay. Secondly, I want to highlight ellipse options. So the menu option with the three vertical dots. So if we click on that, you'll see there's several options. So let's quickly go through them. If ever you find your Linux Google Cloud Shell terminal is freezing, the first thing if I were you would be attempt to do is to press Control C several times, and hopefully that will bring your terminal back. But if that doesn't work, in worst case, simply select the three vertical dots and then choose Restart. And that will kill your existing terminal and restart a new session. Be aware you will lose any data that was not saved in the home folder. Likewise, you can upload documents from your desktop or laptop to the Google Cloud Shell environment and vice versa. You can download documents from your Google Cloud Shell environment to your desktop or laptop. There's a default mode, safe mode. I'm not going to go into that now, but it's just, it's a limited version. The ephemeral mode, I suppose is really nice in that if you know you will not need a home folder, if you know you will not need persistent storage, you can select this option. And that will mean your Google Cloud Shell will start so much faster in less than five seconds, maybe even three seconds. Why? When it loads, it doesn't have to connect the virtual machine to your persistent storage. And that takes time. Of course, it'll display useful statistics if you wish. And then about Cloud Shell, um, if you want to have fine, let's click on that now. And it gives you very basic information. Cloud Shell allows you to manage your Google Cloud infrastructure and develop your applications from any browser with Google Cloud Shell. And as you can see, it comes with the Cloud Software Development Kit, Cloud Code, an online code editor, I'll speak about that in a moment, and other utilities pre-installed. And crucially, it's free for all users, fantastic. At this point, no harm selecting the help. There's one or two web pages that it's worth looking at. So if you select the ellipse and the help option, it'll open up a new tab and then you're presented with this URL. My advice is click on the link here under resources, how Cloud Shell works. And if you do, it'll bring you to the main Cloud Shell documentation page. And it's worth reading, especially these two links at the bottom here, how Cloud Shell works and limitations and restrictions. So very briefly, when you start Cloud Shell, it provisions a compute engine virtual machine running a Debian-based Linux operating system. And as I've already highlighted, Cloud Shell instances are provisioned on a per user, per session basis. Well, I highlighted that it's a per session basis, but it's also on a per user basis. But that's fine, we're assuming there's one user logging in at this time. And the instance persists while your Cloud Shell session is active. Now be aware, it says after an hour of inactivity, your session is automatically terminated and the VM is discarded. In fact, in my experience, it's far less than an hour. It's actually about 20 minutes of inactivity that the session is terminated and your VM is discarded. So be aware of that if you decide to go off for a cup of tea or make a cup of coffee and so on, okay? Again, more information about the five gigs of persistent free storage that's mounted as your home directory. I've already explained that. Um, read the rest yourselves. It's worth reading. Um, these are the various editors that are installed, the various tools, the build packages, um, and additional tools and so on. Mercurial distributed control system is also installed. The various languages, I think I've shown you most of those already that are installed, and so on. Okay. Likewise, in your own time, have a look at the various limitations and restrictions. Several of them may apply to you depending on your circumstances. Again, if you want to learn more about the Google Cloud Shell, there's fantastic documentation here. Launching it, using it, authorizing it, using the Google Cloud Shell editor, which I'll speak about in a moment, how to launch it actually, maybe now is a good time to speak about it. The easiest way to start a Google Cloud session and beginning using the Google Shell editor is to directly launch a Google Shell editor session with the URL ide.cloud.google.com. So if I click on that, it's going to bring us now to the Google Cloud Shell. Boost mode is a particular mode that allows you to get a boost for a couple of minutes. I'm going to cancel because I don't need that right now, but it may be useful in your scenario, depending on your use case, okay? 
And as you can see, there is the Google Cloud Shell has been loaded. Now, I'm not really here to speak about the Google Shell Editor, um, but you can look at this in your own time, but it's very, very powerful. It allows you, as it says here, to create, build, and deploy your native out cloud applications in an online editor. It's really, really nice, but it's beyond the scope of this video. Okay, so I'm just going to close that, but be aware it's there. I just want to highlight that. Okay, um, that's fine. That's what I want to highlight there. Excellent. As you can see, when I return back to my Google Cloud Shell Terminal um, tab, you notice that it's closed because when I activated the Google Cloud Shell Editor, <coughs> excuse me, it switched to that the tab. So what I'm going to do here is simply choose Reconnect. Okay, and as you can see, there it is. Excellent. Now there are just two more items I wish to demonstrate, and they are to display the editor that's a cloud editor that's available, and lastly, the you, how to use the web preview. So firstly, the oh, the cloud editor. As you can see, the button is simply there. If we click Open Editor, it'll now switch to the editor view. And with the editor view, one can simply browse. If I click here to file, one can simply browse, um, say open folder, and I can browse my files and folders of my Linux command line terminal. So say for example, if I click um, index.html here, uh, I beg your pardon, um, I'm going to open that folder. It initializes the cloud shell editor again, okay. Um, and now see the file here, index.html, if I click on that, there it is. It's a simple text file and I can edit it here. So for those of you who don't like editing with Vim or Emacs or whatever, or Nano, one can simply edit their files directly with the cloud editor. Perfect. And now the last aspect I want to feature, talk about is the web preview feature. And this is a really, really nice feature. It's actually, it's one of the most fantastic features of all, dare I say it, within Google Cloud Shell. So what have I done here? I've got a folder called test, and inside that folder, I've got a file, a simple file, a one-line file called index.html. And I have a very basic HTML file that simply says, hello, YouTube world, isn't web preview great? Okay, so I'm now gonna switch back to my terminal here. I'm now going to show you that folder and file from within the command line. So I'm going to change the folder. I'm going to verify the contents of the folder. As you can see, there's only one file. And now I'm going to display the contents of the file index.html. And there it is. What exactly is Web Preview? The Web Preview feature, it allows you to run web applications on the Google Cloud Virtual Machine instance, and you can preview them directly from the Google Cloud Console. This means that you can run any web application that listens to HTTP requests on the Google Shell virtual machine, including the App Engine development server, and the web application can be previewed directly within your browser. Just be aware the web application must listen for HTTP requests on ports between the permitted range 2000 and 65000. So how can we run a web server? Well, believe it or not, Python tree has one built in. You simply type Python tree space minus M, which means we're going to run a module, space and then the module we're going to run is simply HTTP.server. And we can optionally specify a port, which I will, which 8080 support I'm going to specify. So if I hit enter, that now literally will run a web server on port 8080. And now I'm going to go up to the web preview button, as you can see here, I'm going to select it, and then we have an option to preview on the default port, which is 8080, or indeed we can choose any port between 2000 and 65000. So I'm going to select preview on port 8080, and now it will simply display the web page that I've created. Isn't that fantastic? We can use this to preview any cloud native web app, all from within the Google Cloud Shell and Google Cloud Console. I think that's wonderful. So I'm just going to close that tab now. And just to show you, to exit from your server, simply select or press Control C, and that will close the server, it will exit the server. And now I'm just going to clear my screen. As soon as you're finished using the Google Cloud Shell, I advise you to log out straight away so as to minimize your quota usage. Great. And then simply log out from your account if you wish. Happy days.
I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. If you did, please like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.